Okay, YouTubers, this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for joining me on The Angry Truth Channel. So today's video is going to be a little different. We're going to talk about America, the forever changing country. Now, a lot of people seem to think that America should just stay in its original form, right? And, and listen, no country, no city, no state can ever stay the same. Now, I am not saying that it should be changing for the worse. Absolutely not, which we are headed for. The United States is definitely headed to some bad shit, just the way everything's changing, just the way these woke assholes are acting here in the country. But we are a forever changing country, guys. America's not going to stop changing. America's always going to change, whether it's for the worse or the best. And I'm hoping for the best, but we have to go through bad times too. We have to sit there and suck up this shit that's going on. This bad shit that we see, that's the things we have to deal with right now, unfortunately. Do we stop it and can we stop it? Well, we can stop it if we stop doing certain things. Before I get into the whole, what America means to me and how it's forever changing, this is how you stop a lot of this shit that's going on, guys. You stop fucking buying from these companies. You stop watching their sports. What NFL did, what NFL is gay, lesbian, and went through all that other bullshit, stop watching the NFL, guys. If you are not happy with what, what they are pushing, stop watching the sport. Stop watching basketball, stop watching football. It seems like hockey right now is the last stronghold of sports here in the United States. If you have a problem with a business, stop buying from them unsubscribe from them it's that simple the more of us do it guys we will not have this problem nickelodeon for example what they did with the bullshit pride month stop having your kids watch nickelodeon stop watching stop having your kids watch shows that embody that bullshit that is how you confront it it's simple once you hit them in their pocket guys they'll stop they'll phase it out they won't just abruptly stop they'll phase it out this is how you get their attention we got October coming up. That is LGBT History Month. That's how you are going to attack them, or we are going to attack them. We're going to stop buying their shit for that month. Simple. They are going to take the hit, and then they're going to realize it wasn't worth it. If we all stick together in this process, we can all make a difference. But if we don't, then it's going to continue to go on, and we're going to continue to complain. So... Back to America. Guys, America was the spoiled brat child when it was first founded. America was found because that's what explorers did. They explored. They found some shit and they were like, oh, here we go. A new land. America. And so with that, guys, America started out, of course, as violent as it did. With slavery, with the annihilation of Native Americans, it started out violent. A spoiled brat kid is just that. He's that fucking asshole that does everything under the sun that you don't want him to do. But when he grows up, he becomes more responsible. He becomes the person or the kid you wanted him to be as an adult. He's no longer a kid, sorry, and he becomes an adult, and that's the adult you want. That's what America is, guys. So for those of you liberals that are still crying about certain things, yes, America started out bad. Yes, America had its fucking woes. But it doesn't change the fact that you still have the freedoms to complain about those walls. It still doesn't change the fact that you can walk down the street and not have anybody bother you. In other countries, if you're a lady, you can't walk down the street after a certain time of night. If you're a certain color or a certain race or have a certain last name, you can't walk into certain neighborhoods and you can't walk down certain streets. But here in America, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And yet people like, uh, what's her name, Gwen Berry, that bitch, fucking sitting there complaining about the national anthem being played. She's an asshole. We're not going to get into her because I don't want to give her too much fucking acknowledgement because she's a fucking asshole. If you want to know what she did, look at uh, Officer Tatum's video, Candace Owens' video. There's a million videos about this bitch. But it's people like her that are the reason why I'm responding with this video. Because, yes, I remember growing up and experiencing racism. It was a lot. It was enough. I won't say it was a lot. I won't say I was getting washed down the street with a hose or fucking told I couldn't sit here or sit there, but I've experienced racism where I went to a restaurant and I didn't get any service because I was black. When you watch a white couple walk in and obviously walk in well after you and then they get service before you. 
I've had that happen to me. I've been followed around in stores. I've experienced almost everything under the sun, including getting arrested by a cop just because I was black, just because he thought I was selling drugs. And you know what it didn't do? What it did for a short time, sorry, is I was uh, angry at whites. And I won't say I hated whites. I was angry at whites for a long time because of the racism that I experienced for myself, that I had to deal with. And then you grow up and then you become a man. And then you start seeing the world for what it really is. You start seeing the division played on purpose so that we are always separated and we're never together. We start, you start seeing the shit that's going on when you're an adult. You start seeing a black community killing one another based on drugs, gangs, a woman. You start seeing the black community for what it really is when you get older. You start seeing that it's not the cops killing you, the black man. It's the fucking cops trying to stop another black man from being killed by arresting these fucking scumbags out here. This is the problem of the world we live in. We sit there and we alienate the cops, we criminalize the cops, and we make criminals heroes. George Floyd, he was a fucking criminal scumbag. Fuck him. But this is where we are. He has statues and Eric Chauvin's going to jail. Derek Chauvin's going to jail now. Living in the past is not how you're going to change this country. You're not. You can't live in the past and talk about slavery and all the shit you never experienced. You never seen half this shit. Some of these kids that complain about racism never really experienced racism. Just because a white guy's assertive with you or a white guy's stern in the way he talks to you doesn't mean he's a racist. He might not just like you. Or maybe you're the fucking asshole, like I said before in my other videos. This country has taught me a lot. The fucking racism has taught me a lot. I became rebellious against white folks. I started reading about Malcolm X, Nat Turner, Martin Luther King, Megan Everts, the Black Panther Party, the old school Black Panther Party, which I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, the Black Panther Party for self-defense back in Oakland, California, they were the real fucking deals. Those guys got it done because they did shit other than complain. They tried to fix their community. They started a job program. They did all of this shit. Those are the guys I respect. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, you, 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 you respect cop killers? We're not gonna get into that discussion. Because the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense out in uh, Oakland, California, when they were started, they were the real fucking deal. They were all the reason why I am the way I am today. Because their rebelliousness is what I learned from. Malcolm X's rebelliousness, Martin Luther King's are what I learned from. Megan Everett, Nat Turner, those are the guys I learned from. Those are the guys I wanted to be if we ever ended up in that scenario. But we didn't. We're not. We're free. We're able to do what we want. We could have YouTube channels. We could become millionaires. So where's the complaint on the racism now? So now I took that rebellious attitude, if you will, and now I'm just rebelling against the system. No vaccines. Fuck COVID. If I get sick, so what? I'm not taking a shot. I'm not gonna to subscribe to the bullshit that's going on out here today. But that's what learning about those men taught me and that's the way I am. That's why I am the way I am. Plus my father, my father was a cop. He was a black cop in Port Authority where racism was really fucking bad when he was a cop because he was one of a few black guys there. But still, he rose above that shit. He made a career for himself. He got a retirement check and he got a retirement and he retired. No harm, no foul. Yes, he, he described some of the shit he went through. Some of it was funny. He told me one that was, you know, I guess at the time he wasn't laughing, but he laughed about it afterwards. But that was the racism he had to deal with. And he didn't let it get to him. He didn't go off on a fucking tangent. He didn't fucking start threatening dudes and killing them and all this other crazy shit. He dealt with it. He dealt with it the way a black man was supposed to deal with it. Because any other way is what those racists would have wanted. Him to get fired. Right? So now, 2021, where's the racism? I'm not worried about a fucking white guy looking at me the wrong way and telling me I can't eat in his restaurant. I am not worried about that at all. I can go anywhere in this country and fucking sit down in someone's restaurant, even in a white fucking populated neighborhood. I can sit down in that restaurant and I won't be treated any differently. For Christ's sakes, guys, I was in the Adirondacks. That's like the last stronghold of white America. Well, not the last stronghold, but you get what I'm saying. And I go in that restaurant and no one fucking bats an eyelash. The waitress fucking tends to us, get our meal and go. Now, I did go to a, a hunting store and the guy sort of gave me shit. But 
when I started firing back at him, he realized, what the fuck? And you saw it in his eyes automatically. He sort of like, why the fuck am I being this way? It was the weirdest interaction. And after that, we were cool with each other the rest of the time. He had no fucking problems. He was even pointing me in certain places where we should go to hunt. Again, guys, it's the way you carry yourself. It's the way people are going to see you. And if you carry yourself like a fucking asshole, people are going to treat you like an asshole. And not because you're black, because you're a fucking asshole. It comes down to this fucking country allowing you to do the things you want to do. You are your own Achilles heel. You. Not fucking a white guy, not the cops, not the fucking big tech companies. You are. You want to make it, you're going to fucking do it. That's what America fucking does and allows you to do. You can't tell me fucking Africans, Indians, Chinese come to this country and make it. And your fucking lazy ass can't get out of your apartment to do what? Get a job. But everybody else comes here to flourish and you can't. The shit is on you because you're an asshole. Now, I'm going to touch on something that's probably going to piss a lot of you guys off. But you know who I am. I don't give a fuck. Black History Month. A lot of you guys seem to think that black, like you guys will ask, why is it Black History Month? Black History Month's for a reason, guys. Black History Month is because in schools, they never taught about black heroes. You wanted to learn about black heroes. You had to go out on your own to do it. You had to wait till you got to college or you had to go to the Schomburg Library, which is right over here, and learn about black heroes. People wanted their kids to learn about black heroes, white and blacks alike. So that's what Black History Month was made. But they should definitely get rid of Black History Month because black heroes, even Native American heroes, should be intertwined in American history. That's what we should be talking about. American history should have these races in it and there should be a separate month. Now, to be fair, with black heroes, there's a lot. There's an absorbent amount of black heroes out there like there are white heroes. So yes, Black History Month, yeah, even with one month, you're not going to learn about the fucking hero, the, the heroes that you need to learn about. You're going to learn about the basic ones. And I hate to call them basic, but that's what they are now. Martin Luther King, basic. Uh, George Washington Carver, basic. And I get why they start with those guys, because they are the nicer of the bunch. Well, you, you'll even learn about Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth. But you won't learn about the, the, the smaller heroes out there, like Megan Everts. A lot of people don't know who he is. Right? He was a civil rights leader. Right? You even had, back then, guys, Hang on your, your, your knickers. Even back then, you had Jesse Jackson, who stood with Martin Luther King, right? Even back then, you, you could see why he was warranted. Now, he's just a fucking kook, right? And these are the heroes that you want to learn about. These are the heroes that I wanted to learn about. But you didn't have that in Black History Month. Oh, you, when, when you didn't have Black History Month, sorry, you didn't have that. That's why they created it. They created it so that they can be, it can be taught. But I think now, in this day and age, I think black heroes should just be thrown into American history across the board. Because that's how you keep the vision going. You keep the vision going by saying, well, we're going to have Black History Month, Asian History Month, Hispanic History Month, LGBT. No, I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, these are the months that, you, that you, you're creating division with, when you could just put them in American history. And this is how these people contribute to American history. Right? That's why Black History Month's way. Now, some of you guys, but what about White History Month? White History Month, guys, was every fucking day. They, you, taught, you learned about white heroes your entire life. For so, some of you that are over 60, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know that there wasn't Black History Month when you guys were in school. If you're 70, you didn't have that shit in your school. So that was White History Month, every day of the week. And that's why they created Black History Month. Do I, say, do I think Black History Month is warranted now? No, it should be fucking, it should be all incumbents in American history. But it was needed to get started, to get to where it got to, right? That's a bit of a fucking history lesson for those of you that are still wondering about White History Month or, or Black History Month. Anyway, guys, America is what it is. It's the country that allows you to do what the fuck you want to do. It's that simple. You can't fucking claim racism. You can't sit there and be like, the white man told me I couldn't do X, Y, and Z. Well, Negro, if fucking you are still listening to a white guy tell you what you can and can't do, that shit's on you. That shit's on nobody else but you. There were people that told me I couldn't be a fireman. Guess what the fuck I am today? There were people that told me I wasn't going to make it in the fire department. 17 motherfucking years later, here I am. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. This is fucking America, and America lets you do what the fuck you want to do when you want to do it. 
With that, guys, this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching. You can like and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Telegram as The Angry Truth Channel. Thank you for watching.